What are your options here? Integration by parts. I mean, that's all you have. That's all you have. Because all you have is a single term, right? I mean, a single thing here. And there's no basic use substitution you're going to do, because there's only one thing there. So it's hard to see something in its derivative. If there's only one thing there, right? So if you do your integration by parts, what, does you, what is u going to be? The arc cosine of x. And if you're going to use this as your u, then uh, you better know the derivative of it. And that's, that's going to be on your formula sheet, right? So negative 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And then dv here has to be dx. And then going up to v, you got just x, right? Let me just write out what, what would remain. We would have x, <coughs> arc cosine of x, that's ultraviolet, minus, I always leave a little bit of a space for constants. Do we have any constants to pull out? When I'm looking at voodoo? A negative one can come out, right? So how about we change that to a plus? And then what's there? x over square root of one minus x squared dx. Now does this, does this integral scare you or intimidate you? What could you use there? Just, just basic u sub. Basic u sub. If you just let this whole thing right in there be u, what's its derivative? Negative 2x, right? And so you're off by a constant. So you'd be able to work that one through. I'm going to leave this for you to finish out yourself. OK, what about the next one here? I think a problem like this, I, I hope at least, a problem like this is almost obvious to you. x squared cosine x dx. So what's the method? Parts, integration by parts. What are you going to choose as your u? x squared. Why? Because in the new integral, it's going to be just x, right, with some constants, right? And cosine in the new integral is going to go to sine. So then, once you're there, you'll have to do parts again. And so basically, parts is going to allow us to just chip away at that power. We're going to go from x squared down to x, and then x will be gone. So two iterations of integration by parts on this one. This next one should also look familiar to you. e to the x cosine x. Anyone recognize that one? Yep, that's the, the rabbit out of the hat problem. Now, the one I think I did in class, this was e to the 2x. And I might have used sine x instead. But this one, you should be thinking integration by parts. And that if you let this be u in the new integral, it's going to stay itself, right? And then the antiderivative of this in the new integral is going to be sine. So nothing appears to get better. But then when you do it one more time, the original integral appears on the, on the other side. And then you add it to both sides, and then you divide by the number, and, and you're there. So do you think that like, any time you see a trig function multiplied by something with an exponent, that that means that you can do the integration by function? Okay. Because I just want to make sure this is on camera and we can hear it. Because a lot of times students ask questions, and if you watch the video later, you have no idea what they said. So you're saying if we ever see like a power function, a power of x, attached to a trig function, that integration by parts should be the way we go. Or even how we had um, like x squared or 10 is that the same? Like That's right. That should trigger integration by parts in that you're going to be able to kill that power off eventually, right? Now, if you see two functions 
These, these, these functions are actually called cyclic functions <coughs> because if you take the derivative of these or integrate them, they go through a cycle. So like cosine, if you integrate, is sine. If you integrate, it's negative cosine. If you integrate, it's negative sine. If you integrate, it's back to cosine. It takes four iterations to complete the cycle. Same with differentiation. If you differentiate this once, you get negative sine. Second time, you get negative cosine. Third time, you get sine. And you're, you're back to, and then one more derivative, you're back to cosine. See what I mean by cyclic? So as you take derivatives, it just keeps on flip-flopping between four different things. This is also cyclic, but it's kind of trivial because e to the x, you integrate or differentiate, it just stays itself the whole time, right? Yes? So you're saying that in most cases, if, that's, if it's cyclic like that, uh, that u should be ultra You can actually pick either one. Either one? It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, for this, I've picked this e to the x to be my u. But you could do it the other way. You could let this one be your u and your dv be this one, and you will still get that other integral to appear on the other side. Uh, I don't think so. I would, I would prefer to integrate this right now because I know it's sine. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. So when you see something that looks cyclic like this, like, like it's going to repeat, then you should be thinking rabbit out of the hat, it's going to appear on the other side. When you see a power function in front of your trig function, you can start thinking repeated integration by parts. I, I really am not a huge fan of, of I don't know. There, I know some of you who might go to the tutoring lab, they may show you this acronym. I don't know if anyone has seen this. I don't even know what it is. Like, what is it? Yeah, yeah, what is it? <laughs> I uh, latte or something like that. I don't even know what it is. L I A T E. L I L I A T E. I actually don't even know what this is, um, but it, apparently it's a way of helping students do integration, where they it's like you're supposed to like let like. Like your u substitution, you're supposed to like always let your logarithm be u first. If that doesn't work, then use, I don't know what the i stands for. Inverse trig functions, a, algebraic functions, trig, and then exponential. I think this is cute, but it's, <laughs> to, me, to me, honestly, to me, honestly, it's more like, you know, FOIL was back in algebra. You know that cute word, that cute thing, foil, where they're like, you know, if you want to multiply two binomials, uh, <laughs> that's not even number three x minus four. If you want to multiply two binomials, we take the first ones, f for foil. Then we do the outer ones, okay? That's o for outer, and then we do the inner ones, right? And it's cute. And trust me, everyone says foil. I still say foil. The problem with something like this is that the student really doesn't ever learn like what it is they're doing so as soon as you give them like that then foil goes away right you can't foil this and if you didn't understand what expanding polynomials really was like the process then foil f f fails you right so, you know, the process is this gets distributed to each term. Then this gets distributed to each term. And then this gets distributed to each term. And that's it, you're done. So that's why I don't like things like this, because they're cute and they're nice to remember and a lot of people use them effectively. But I think when you look at an integral, it's better to just look at it like holistically. Like what's going on here, as opposed to like, where's the logarithm? <laughs> No logarithm. Where is the inverse function? No inverse function. Where is the algebraic function? There's the algebraic function. That is you. You know, it's like you're not thinking about what you're doing. Does that make sense? You're not seeing the derivatives in your head. You're not seeing like how things are connected. Does that make sense? I think it's a much deeper way of, of thinking, which again, at the end of the day, engineers, computer science majors, this is not about you go get a job and one day your boss is going to sit you down and be like, 
you know, do this integral, man. I mean, come on, your job depends on this integral. Do it right now. It's your ability to think at a certain, like, a certain level, right? So if all you're ever successful at is following robot, like, sort of um, algorithms, right? Like, yes, you're very good at repeating other people's stuff, <coughs> but you can never really think for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. You, no, you don't agree? Or, no? No? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I will say I've, I've conceded a little bit here today. If you see a power function with a trig function, yes, integration by parts. If you see two like cyclic functions, yes, integration by parts. You didn't like what I said. What happened? What's wrong? Come on, man. We're all being we're all being open and honest here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's debatable. It's open, it's open for debate. Because a lot of people do use that. Layate or layate or whatever it is. Yeah, a lot of people use it. A lot of people use also for, uh, uh, you know when you're taking derivatives and quotient rule? Have you ever heard that little jingle like high low minus low high? Low high minus high low or something like that? Whatever. I mean, there's all sorts of cute ways to, to Remember things, right? Ultraviolet minus voodoo. You could look at that as being cute, you know? All right, what about this? This ain't cute. Okay, integration by parts. Let's, let's see. So I, I'm, I'm writing this down, but I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking here. I like the idea of integration by parts because I see a power function. I know integration by parts is very good at pulling that, like dropping that power down each time I do it. I'm not very excited about the fact that this would imply I would need to do it five times, right? Um, so, okay, so I, I'm like, all right, great. I, I let that be my power function, fine. But that forces me to make this one my, uh, my dv, and that is a problem. Because the antiderivative of e to the x cubed is not e to the x cubed. Do we agree that this is wrong? Because what's the derivative of this? Itself times 3x squared, which isn't here, right? So the antiderivative up here is not this. So I should, I should be taking that off the table now in terms of letting this be my u and this be my dv which would really only leave me with one other choice if I were going to do use integration by parts, which would be to make the e to the x cubed my u and my dv 3x to the fifth dx. Do I like that, though? No. Can I differentiate this? Yeah, e to the x cubed times 3x squared dx. Hold on. Can I integrate this? Yes, it's going to be like 3 sixth, which is 1 half, x to the sixth. So I've got like an x to the sixth over here, and I've got an e to the x cubed times 3x squared, and then I'm going to hit that with an x to the sixth. I don't like that, because I think you would say that's even worse than this, right? Okay, you raise your hand. To find v from here, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by the power rule. Um, can you just tell me what you think? Would it be like uh, 1 over x to the third power plus 1? And then uh, e? The, the power rule only works when you have <laughs> x to a power. X, it has to be x to a power. <coughs> Then that's 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. But this has to be x. It cannot be e to the x cubed. So it appears like neither one of these are going to work. 
So how about a U substitution? Okay, let's go with the U substitution. What are you going to use as your U substitution? You want to use e raised to the x cubed as your u. Then the derivative of this is itself times 3x squared dx, right? So this right here, you're saying that this right here is going to be your u, right? Everything, the only thing that's left here is 3x to the fifth dx, right? And this is what I'm trying to match it to. I kind of like it, but I kind of don't, because I don't have an x to the fifth here, do I? So how am I going to get x to the fifth here? Right? So you, so I don't know. Can we say that this is like maybe, maybe, but I'm treading on, you know, I'm not quite sure I really can make that happen. So you said, can we do the other one? Can we let the 3x to the fifth be u? Right? Can, is that the other suggestion, maybe? So that's u, and then the derivative of that, or just x to the fifth, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have an x to the fourth, right? And I don't have an x to the fourth here, and I've got an e in there, too. Make, make you what? That seems like crazy talk. X cubed, what are you talking about? That seems, that seems insane. Or is it perfect? All right, so let's see what happens here. If I take the derivative of this, I get 3x squared <laughs> dx, right? So I'm going to be able to rewrite this just think about how this is going to be rewritten at this point. This right here, e to the x cubed, is going to be e to the u, right? This is 3x squared but dx, but up there I've got a 3. Ooh, I've got a 3. That's nice. Um, x squared, that's x to the fifth. Ah, but you can look at that as x cubed times x squared. So maybe it's not insane, right? We, we were looking for a 3x squared dx up there. That's what we were looking for. I have a 3x squared dx. So everything, all of that, everything I put in orange there, that's just <laughs> du, isn't it? Du is going to replace this, this, and this, and that's going to become e to the u. So the only thing I have not dealt with is this but that's u, right? That's what u is. So everything in orange is du, and that thing in red is u. <coughs> that was brilliant. Now integration by parts. Because if you let this be your u, even though we can't use u anymore, we know that, that when we take derivative, it's going to go away. And when we integrate that, it's just going to become itself. So our little table is going to work real good. Should we do it? You had to make a substitution first. And you had to see some weird magic happen here with that x to the fifth get split up. Is that the second problem we've done today where I've had to split something like that? I think it is. All right, so I'm going to use w and dv instead of u and dv. So w is going to be u. dw will be du, or 1 du. dv had to be the e to the u <coughs> du. And that means v is e to the u. Hey, by the way, on that latte thing or whatever, just so you all know, that, that method is not like, um, it's not like I'm not showing it to you because, because it would make things too easy. Okay, trust me. It's, all it does is it gives you like, like a set of things to look at in a certain order. You just go, look for this first, look for that, look for that, look for that. It's still, you still have to do all this. Like, 
It just gives you an order. That's all it does. So it's, I don't want you to feel like, man, my asshole professor, he won't show us, he won't show us like the super shortcut to do all this, you know? He doesn't believe in it. No, it's, that's not what it is. It's just, okay. What's our new integral? This is, this times this, right? U e, U e to the U minus the integral, and I don't have any constants to pull out, so it's just E to the U du. And what is the antiderivative of E to the U? E to the U itself, right? So we get U E to the U minus E to the U plus C. And our last thing would be to put x, back, or x cubed back in for u. So it's x cubed e to the x cubed minus e to the x cubed plus c. So that is, that is uh, the tenth problem on, a, <coughs> on an exam that I gave two years ago. How y'all feeling? Is it going to be as hard as this one? Let's see. Well, this was my, that was my spring 2016 test. My spring 2017 test was harder than that one. When I went, went and looked back on, at it, I thought, I think that this one's a little harder. But let's just, let's breeze through these. I don't think I'm going to work through these, okay? I just don't have time in 20 minutes. I think what happened was in spring 2015, I gave this test and I realized that maybe it wasn't fair because the problems maybe were just, I was pushing too hard. So <clears throat> the one that you just looked at, I think like at least half of the problems on that test were directly homework problems. Like they are just in the book, they are homework problems that you were supposed to do before you came to the test. And I figured, shoot, if half the problems are homework problems, everybody should get at least a 50, right? It didn't happen, but that was the theory, <laughs> okay? I am going to make your test, the one that you're going to take next week, it is going to be in line with the homework, okay? It's, I'm not going to go and make it harder or try and pull anything else, but if it's in the homework, it's fair game. So everything I've done today is a homework problem. Even though they look weird, they are homework problems. All right, so first one. I'm going to go through these fast. First one. What would you do with that? This over this, this over this, this over this, this over this, and that's it. Split it up into separate integrals. Each one of them are going to be like, I don't know, what's this 3x squared over x squared? 3. So can you integrate 3? I hope so. <laughs> Minus 4x over x squared. It'll be like 4 over x, and that's going to be a natural log. And then this one over this one, you have to play with the, po the powers a little bit, but you'll get x to a power, you <coughs> integrate it. So this is just split up and then do power rule, yes? Okay, next one. U sub, what's your u? Just cosine x. If you grab one plus cosine squared x, you have to do chain rule, and that's gonna make a lot of things appear that you don't want. So if you let u be, this right here, cosine x, the derivative of it is up here. You're off by a constant. And then you have to work the rest of it through. What about this one? x squared over this right here. What would the derivative of that be? I can replace this, right? with du. I can replace that with u, right? What about x squared, though? This is u minus 2 is x, right? Square both sides. I went ahead and squared it like I foiled it, right? I foiled that out when I squared it. So that would be the top, right? So, yes? So my new integral would be u squared minus 4u plus 4 all over what? Square root of u and then du, right? 
split it into three different integrals. This over this, this over this, this over this. Powers, it will all be powers of u, and you can do them individually. So yes? Can we just do it in parentheses, like uh, u minus two in parentheses with the power of u? Yes, you could, but once you got it to here, what are you going to do? You're going to want to expand it and then just do your separate powers. That's why I expanded it right away. Because how are you going to do this? You, you can't do it unless you, you expand it and then just separate it out. Look at that next one. Number four. What do you think? Yep, you're going to rewrite this x cubed as x squared times x. Now, what are you going to choose as your u? Let's go for x squared plus 4. What's the derivative of that? 2x dx. I don't have a 2, so 1 half kills off the 2. Okay, I have x dx right here, right? This is u, and this right here can be solved for using that. So x squared is what? X, we're going to leave it as x squared. x squared is u minus 4. So this integral becomes x squared, which is u minus 4, over u to the 3 halves. And x dx was 1 half du. How do you do that integral? Split it again. Different powers. Got it? <coughs> this next one, if I, I would not give you one like this. But, because um, I haven't shown you one like this. But the way we do that is you do long division first. You have to do long division on this polynomial over polynomial. And then once you do that long division, you can, you can do more to it. But we want, we're not going to mess with that. How about the next one? Oh. Oh. How about this one here? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, let's not look at six. I, we're just, it's too far out of what I would give you at this point. Too far away. All right, what about seven? Seven is definitely fair game. Integration by parts. What's u? Okay, so your, your instinct may be x, right? Because in the integration by parts, it's going to go away. But you better be able to integrate arc sine if you're going to do that. But you can't integrate arc sine because you don't have a formula for it. But if you do it the other way and you let this be um, u, what's the derivative of that? 1 over the square root, and this is the important part, of 1 minus x squared, right? Yes? And then what are you going to do with this one? Integrate, right? And so you'll get 1 half x squared, and then you look at the diagonal and try and work with that. Don't worry, don't, don't, you know what, don't even mess with that. This, this is just to get you thinking about what you would do, okay? Like, this is going to be your you, not that. So it's really definitely necessary to know the Pythagorean uh, identities of the inverse sines, cosines, like you said, the one over radical. That's the derivative of arc sine, not the Pythagorean. Oh, yeah, the, the derivative, well, they're on your formula sheet, but yes, derivative of arc sine is definitely one you need to know. In fact, well, this test didn't have it. So this test only had eight problems, and that was it. And this last one, I can remember giving this test. I remember giving, and so many people missed the last one, and I was just so disappointed, because it was a gimme. <coughs> I, that was a free, free, point, a free problem right there. I just made it look so bad that people just avoided it. What's that? It's u sub. What's u? Everything under this root. What's its derivative? Everything up here, right? 
So that <coughs> integral becomes 1 over root u du. And then you just write that as u to the negative 1 half, and you're done, right? Never want to lose sight of, of, you know, what we're trying to do. So you see something ugly, that doesn't mean it's an ugly method to get rid of it. All right, uh, what time is it, 2.30? I passed around all the homework. Where's that stack of homework, or quizzes and things like that? There's some more over here. I'm going to start the sign-in sheet back here. Is anybody getting together in a study group tomorrow? Today, I would love to join, but I have commitments today. Y'all getting together tomorrow at all? No? Next week? Monday morning? Cram session? What's that? Uh, Monday, I have class in the morning. Yeah. Um, I'm done with my class at 1040, and I have a break till 1230. It's in the syllabus, my office hours. <coughs> All right, so if you had to take anything away from like what you should do between now and Tuesday to get ready for this test, what would it be? Just do your homework, okay? Make sure that you can sit there, you know, have your, your girlfriend, boyfriend, dad, mom, cousin, whoever, just go, like, ask them to just pick a problem, give them, like, take them to the book and tell, say, hey, here's 5.5 and 6.1. I want you to just randomly go and pick a problem, don't tell me what section it's from, and put it down on a piece of paper. And try and figure it out, all right? <coughs> practice, practice, practice. Also, eat, eat, and sleep, all right, the day before. Do not pull an all-nighter. It's not effective, unless you're on Adderall.